Thanks for joining me, this is Danny, and welcome to my updated spotlight on Tiny Redstone. If you did see the last spotlight, some of this will be familiar to you, but a lot of stuff is brand new. Tiny Redstone is a forge mod for Minecraft that adds many tiny redstone pieces that you can put together on redstone panels to form tiny, compact redstone circuits. These circuits can be copied onto blueprints, shared inside and outside of your Minecraft world. They can be picked up, moved, rotated, linked with other panels, and you can even dye them to match your build. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the tiny components that we can use to make our tiny little redstone circuits, along with some sample circuits. We're gonna look at covers that we can use to cover up our circuits, blueprints that are going to allow us to copy our circuits and share them in other worlds with other players. When we're done with all that, we're gonna go up to the top of the tower and have a tiny redstone jam session. Also on this wall, you might notice a little sneak peek at an add-on mod to tiny redstone called Tiny Gates. I'm gonna be covering this in another spotlight. Let's get started with the components. Tiny redstone dust works very similar to regular redstone dust, as most of the components do, but it's much smaller. Um, there are a few exceptions. Tiny redstone dust allows us to select the sides that we want to connect to, which allows us to make the circuits very compact. So you can have your wires going in different directions. You don't have to worry about them connecting to each other unless you want them to. And like redstone, regular redstone, tiny redstone dust does lose power as it goes. So you should find that vanilla redstone circuits are gonna work the same way in tiny redstone that they do in vanilla. And we also do have integration with the one probe. So if you look at the one probe, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, as I'm hovering, it's showing me the power level, tiny redstone torches. Again, they work pretty much the same way as vanilla torches. They are turned off by a redstone signal and they can attach to the side of the blocks or the top of the blocks. Um, one extra thing that they can do in order to, again, help you to make your circuits very small is you can place them on an angle on a flat surface. So as you can see, these are angled, which means that when this gets a redstone signal, it's going to turn that torch off, which means that you don't have to have an extra block there. So again, it lets you make your circuits a little bit more compact. Other than that, they work exactly like vanilla redstone torches. They do have a burnout if there's a loop and they also have a one tick delay, one redstone tick. And then of course we also have the red, tiny redstone block. This tiny redstone block works just like the vanilla redstone block. It outputs a strong signal of 15 on all sides in every direction. The tiny lever works just like the vanilla lever. We have a tiny wooden button and we have a tiny stone button. And just like the vanilla counterparts, the tiny stone button will output a redstone signal when you click on it for 10 ticks and the, the wooden one will output for 15 ticks. So a little bit longer. And then the pistons. So here is just a regular piston. Works just like a vanilla piston. <laughs> it pushes blocks. It can push up to 12 blocks. It can actually push them across panels because anytime you have panels to, together like this, they're essentially linked. And then the sticky piston does exactly what you would expect it to do. It pushes blocks and it pulls them back. The tiny solid block, which looks like a little wool block, and the tiny glass block. These behave, again, just like their vanilla counterpart. So the glass block works like a transparent block where it will not transfer redstone. So if we allow that torch to turn on, we will see that redstone is not being transferred there. But there is also a torch under this tiny solid block. If we turn this switch on, it does end up powering that redstone and then that light. Um, also, just like the vanilla transparent blocks, redstone is allowed to travel up the block, but it will not travel down. So you can see that it's continuing here on the solid block, but it, does, but it stops there with the transparent block. Again, just like vanilla comparators, this tiny comparator here is reading this hopper. So it is giving us an output of three based on how much stuff we have inside this hopper. And I actually have this I have this looping over to this redstone torch, which is blocking this hopper, just to kind of show an example of how you might use this. So currently this hopper is locked because there's a redstone torch on it, but as soon as we add a block here, it's gonna let it through because then that signal becomes greater than three. So if I just throw this in there, we can see our signal is now six and it's going to continue to allow blocks through until it gets down to three. So it's letting those drop in there. 
and then that will turn off. So you could use that for a sorting system. It also will compare signals. So with this lever on, we can see that we are getting a signal of nine here. This is a signal of 10 coming in on the side, so it is outputting nothing. This side is on subtract mode. So again, we have a signal of 10 here. We're getting a signal of 10, 10 minus 10 is zero, so we're outputting nothing. Now, if we shorten these links so that we are now inputting 13 here, we will see that it is outputting the 13 and it'll change a, a weak signal into a strong signal as vanilla comparators do. And of course, this will subtract 10 from 14 and it is now outputting four. So that's the comparator. And the repeater, again, works just like the vanilla repeater where it delays the signal and it makes it 10. So here I've got a little clock made with two repeaters that are set to a tick of four. And of course, if you look at the one probe, you can see that it is telling you the, um, the tick number also. There's also Huela, Huela, or however you want to pronounce that, support as well. I am currently in 117, which Huela does not exist for 117 yet. And then of course, the observers, just like the vanilla observers, these two are facing each other, so they're giving us a fast thing, but they will output a pulse whenever the block that they're facing changes, or if you place or remove a block. And of course, they're super cute, <laughs> right? Tiny redstone lamps. They're just like vanilla redstone lamps, except each one will give us an output of one. So you can control exactly how much light you want your panel to output. A regular redstone lamp gives us an output of 15. So you would need 15 tiny redstone lamps to output the same as a lamp, a regular vanilla lamp. So actually, let me just, just so that we can see what we're dealing with here. I'm going to turn my brightness to moody. And you will see that as I turn this on and it goes through those repeaters, it is gradually going to light up the room. And then if I turn it off, it is gradually going, well, actually, it's not going to gradually do it because of that. But here, let's just <laughs> Ta-da! My favorite block of all, and that is the tiny note block. It's just, it's my favorite just because it's so cute and fun. And actually, we're going to be playing with note blocks upstairs, and I'm going to show you a few examples. So again, they work just like vanilla, except they're much more convenient. You right-click on them to change the note, just like vanilla. But if you take the redstone wrench, um, which, by the way, can also be used to rotate these and to pick them up. Um, however, because I'm in creative mode, if I pick this up, it's going to destroy it. But... Um, we can also, if we right click on a tiny note block, we can change its instrument. Any note block can play any instrument. You don't have to worry about what block it's on top of. And an extra special thank you to Gray Barrett for sharing that last clip in our Discord server. There are two components that are unique to Tiny Redstone. There is no vanilla counterpart. One is the super repeater. Now the super repeater is similar to a repeater except that it allows us to do two things we can't do with the repeater. One of them is to select the delay up to 10 seconds. You can change this in the configs to be as high as you want it to be or as low as you want it to be or whatever. I have, again, I have another clock here, so I wanna make sure these are set to the same. We can also set it to zero. So if we go all the way down to zero, we then have a zero tick repeater, which allows us to repeat a signal for as long as we want to without delay. There is a limitation in that the circuit will overflow if it goes too far. Um, and that is also configurable. And that is just there in order to prevent um, stack overflows. We've got the same situation here. I've got an edge detector that's feeding into a clock. So actually, that, I didn't show you that over here, but basically that's what I had going on here too. It's an edge detector. But this is just obviously a very, very slow clock. And then this little component right here is called a redstone bridge, a tiny redstone bridge. And that allows us to cross signals over each other. So again, another tool to allow you to make your circuits very, very small. You also might notice if you saw my last spotlight on Tiny Redstone that you can stack blocks now. So we can have, we have, we have a full block space that we can stack these blocks up. So you can make very <laughs> like detailed Redstone 
circuits in a very, very small space. You can use the shrink mod, <laughs> which allows you to basically shrink down into a very small space, and that might make it a little easier for you. Um, I do plan on adding a magnifying glass to this mod at some point. Let's take a quick peek at the covers. The covers allow us to cover up our circuits, as you might imagine. There are two different types of covers. There's a dark panel cover and a light panel cover. The difference is not in the color. They are both, they both take on whatever color the circuit is, which of course we can color with just a piece of dye. One of them allows light through and the other one does not. And the pattern on them is slightly different, as you can see, like this one has deeper lines and that one is more smooth. But basically that just allows, this one will completely prevent the block from syncing to the client. So every, all of the inputs and outputs will work for you. It'll be way less taxing on a server if you're playing on a server with a lot of other people and you have a lot of crazy, really complicated circuits, just covering them up like this is doing all that stuff. Like it's gonna to continue to do that, but we won't be able to see it, it's not gonna render it, and it's not gonna sync it. The light cover will allow light through. So it does have to do some client syncing. It won't bother doing the rendering. So now let's take a look at the blueprints. That's what it looks like when it's blank. This is a blueprint that actually has some stuff on it. We can take a blueprint and we can right click on a circuit and it'll copy that circuit for us. And then if we right click on a panel with a blueprint that has a circuit on it, it will place that circuit for us. Now I am currently in creative mode, so it's free for me, but if I go into survival, we will see that I have 64 tiny solid blocks in my inventory. If I go like this, it's gonna take out the tiny solid blocks that it needs in order to make that circuit. And if you hover over the blueprint, it's going to tell you how many solid blocks it needs. Now what's really great about these, these blueprints and what I really love about them is that we can right click in the air and export them to our file system. So I can save a file that has my blueprint. I can call this the rainbow blueprint. It's actually a completely useless circuit. It just looks nice. And I can click save. And now that saved it to my hard drive. I can go, I can give that to my friends and they can be in a different Minecraft world or whatever. And I can, whoa, what happened there? Oh, there we go. I can then take an empty blueprint, right click in the air, click import, and I can import that blueprint. So there it is. Now, actually, I'm gonna import a different one just so that we can see a different circuit. If we look at this one, we can see that this one requires a lot more stuff. And I don't have that. If I try to do this, it's not gonna work because I don't have the components I need for it. So actually, I'm just gonna go into creative for now so that I can make this circuit. And basically, this is just a piston tape. <laughs> just a little piston tape that uses observers and pistons to keep the pistons going around in a, in a circle or keep the blocks going around in a circle. I'm actually going to break that and now we're going to do something a little bit fun. At least I think it's fun. I made a little something special way up at the top of the tower. It's time for a little jam session. This is my sound console. I've basically got a clock circuit and a bunch of sound loops. On this side of the clock circuit, I've got repeaters that are setting the timing for the clock circuit. And then on this side, I've got super repeaters with a zero tick delay so that this entire side of the clock ends up getting pulsed at the exact same time. So that way all of our sound, all of our loops are going to start at the same pulse. And then for each loop, I have a piston that's gonna push a tiny solid block in order to close this circuit and send the pulse to the loop. And there are two ways to activate it. One is with the button. That'll play the loop a single time. And then the lever will repeat the loop. So then we can bring in the rest of these instruments or the rest of these loops whenever we want to and kind of mix it up and do a little jam. Now we do need to make sure that we click the button or the lever when the redstone signal is on the other side of the clock. Otherwise it won't come in at the exact right time. <laughs> oh. 
Oh my god, this is so fun. Jammin! Check this out! In a tiny little space. Nice. So then when we flip this lever, it is going to finish the loop, of course. it hooray oh my god that's so fun so that is tiny redstone i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you enjoy tiny redstone and of course if you do have any comments or suggestions for the mod or if you want to share some things that you did definitely feel free to do that in the comment section below or on the mod page or on the mod issues page and of course i will have links to those places in the description below so you can check that out and do whatever it is that you want to do and of course if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to click the like button and join me next time thanks for watching bye